What is up, sports bettors? Welcome to uh, Guys and Bets, the podcast version here, entering week nine of the NFL season already. Andrew Avery here with Joe Osborne. Hell! And an empty seat with no Chris Abbott. Oh, is that why there isn't a third person here? The elephant in the room? Just uh, uh, Joe and I moving forward here. Uh, our buddy Chris has uh, moved on, but still working. Yeah, and with uh, Odd Shark. I, uh, I thought he was took a job in the world of pornography, <laughs> from what I understand. Has he gone back to that field? Behind the scenes <laughs> type of work, from what I understand, but, uh, you know, good for him. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, yeah, as you know, uh, if you're a returning listener, Joe and I will break down all of the games on the board, mm-hmm. look at the lines, uh, one of which I believe is still off the board when I was putting together my notes this morning. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll give, uh, stats, trends, uh, sort of player injury news, uh, stuff you need to, you need to know before you hit, uh, the betting window. And if we feel strongly about, uh, a side or a total, we're, we'll certainly toss that in, uh, Four teams off this week, uh, the Atlanta Falcons, the Cincinnati Bengals, the LA Rams, and the New Orleans Saints. Two teams coming off buys, the uh, Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Ravens, but uh, there's big, big news in the race for the top pick of the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. Joe, reports circulating that the Bengals are benching Andy Dalton in favor of rookie Ryan Finley of NC State. Yeah, and you know, I think the Dolphins and Bengals play later this season, mm. which is uh, going to be must-see TV for uh, Dolphins fans like myself. Uh, and we have another barn burner that we'll discuss here, Dolphins hosting the, oh, the Jets here. Boy. But yeah, I am concerned quite a bit as a as a Dolphins fan. I think the Bengals at this point of the season, you know, they came in wanting to win with the new head coach, uh, Zach Taylor, I believe the uh, the young fella's name is. But, uh, you know, they're just off to an awful start. So uh, it, it will be impossible to have two 0-16 teams with them playing each other this season. What but, if it uh, ends a tie? That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> zero, zero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that uh, is certainly going to be... Well, there's two good quarterbacks in the draft now. Uh, Tua was the guy for the past year that everyone is talking about. Now uh, Joe Burrow. I like Justin Herbert as quite well a bit of hype. Oregon. Yeah, I mean, and usually the way we see this work in the NFL draft is that usually that top guy, sometimes they don't emerge to the week of the draft. That's what happened with Baker Mayfield. Not that he's anything to write home about this season, Mm. but uh, weeks out from that draft, uh, some boards had the other quarterbacks ahead of him. Mm -hmm. Similar to Cam Newton, uh, you know, however long ago that is now, but he wasn't at the top of the odds board until like the week of that draft. Yeah. So yeah, it will be interesting to see uh, how that shakes up. Very interesting to see. Also interesting to see is that uh, the Dolphins picked up Aqib Tlaib, which is clearly Hmm. a uh, salary dump move. Yeah, I think they, you know, uh, they want to go further into tanking. So they're going to bring in a guy to uh, screw with the locker room (laughs) and, you know, have a bit of a bad presence there. So they want to, you know... Bad on the field, bad in the locker room, behind the scenes. So, you know, they're covering all their bases, so good for them. Well, let's cover all the bases in the NFL Mm -hmm. this week, and let's start with uh, the Thursday Nighter, Mm -hmm. uh, which is over in the NFC West, and it pits the unbeaten San Francisco 49ers at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, This opened, depending uh, on your book, seven or eight, but it's now nine and a half, and uh, I believe there's... A 10 or two out there already. The total's 43. Chase mm-hmm. Edmonds had to leave Sunday's game, but Arizona went ahead and traded for Kenyon Drake. Yeah. Uh, Matt Breida also a little banged up mm-hmm. here, but it doesn't seem to matter because the Niners have uh, a revolving door of uh, running backs that just pick up yards. So Niners coming off a 51-13 to 13 beatdown of the Panthers here, Joe. And uh, fourth in the league with 27 sacks. Kyler Murray sacked 26 times, which is just three behind league leader and new bench warmer Andy Dalton. Yeah, uh, so it was funny on Sunday. I was watching uh, kind of both of these or paying attention to both of these games on Red Zone, uh, knowing that these teams would be matched up on Thursday night. And we were seeing uh, the Cardinals get the shit kicked out of them by the Saints in one game. And then we saw what the 49ers were doing to the Panthers, and I was thinking, I cannot wait to bet on this game and bet on the Cardinals, mm. thinking the line's going to be an overreaction. It opened at 7, 
Uh, it's still up to 10, but I thought we were going to see this at maybe like 12 and a half yeah. or something insane like that for the 49ers. So I don't know. But aside on this one, uh, there's this kind of misconception that the Cardinals have this great offense. They have the potential to have a great offense, but they're middle of the pack in terms of yards per play. And one really big one sticks out to me here, which gives me kind of pause to uh, bet on Arizona. They rank 31st in red zone TD scoring percentage. Oof. Uh, the 49ers are second in opponent red zone TD scoring percentage, which means uh, you'll see the Cardinals uh, go for a few goal attempts as opposed to putting it in there. Um, yeah, I, I do think I like Arizona looking at a, or uh, San Francisco uh, looking at a few trends. I think the best bet might be the under. The total's gone under in three of the 49ers' last four games on the road. Average combined score 35 and a half. And a uh, pretty big one here. The total has gone under in 10 of the Cardinals' Last 11 divisional home games. And one thing I want to bring up about this, me and you were laughing about this. Uh, you guys at home, if you listen to a lot of NFL betting content, you're going to hear people talk about this as a look-ahead spot mm -hmm. for the 49ers uh, with them playing the Seahawks in Week 10. That's kind of one of those cliches, I think, that people just say. Do you think the 49ers, Shanahan, and the coaching staff are you know, game planning for this one say, okay, yeah. We'll do 50% on this game. Yeah. Then we're going to start planning for the Seahawks a bit early here, guys. So yeah. uh, we don't have to worry too much about the Cardinals. Yeah. It's a divisional opponent. They yeah. want to kick their ass. And I think they, they understand the importance of uh, getting that number one overall seed in the NFC. So, yeah, I, I don't think they're going to take the foot off the gas. If it gets much higher than 10, though, I would lean Arizona. But I think my favorite bet would be the under. Yeah, it's a tough number on the total, I think. Um Arizona 31st in the league in yards allowed. Niners, of course, are first. And, of course, uh, QB pressure is getting to Kyler Murray this season. This game sort of lines up well for the Niners. Like, there's mismatches all over the place here in San Francisco's favor. Um, don't know what I'm going to do. The, the, the total, it looks low on the surface, but this might be a 30, 35 to sort of zero or three <laughs> game the way the Niners are, are, are shutting teams down I'm not not saying I'm going to bet that yet yeah need some time to dig into that but uh, this one could be ugly and it could get ugly quick one thing to keep in mind for this that I found uh, or I paid particular attention to when the 49ers were beating the shit out of the Panthers they took their starters out yeah they because did. you know probably intentionally because they're playing on Thursday night so that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the Cardinals, their starters played the whole game. So, you know, I at this point in the season, I do tend to lean to home teams on Thursday night, but there's just so much pointing towards the 49ers. But if this spread gets much bigger outside of 10, I don't know about that. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, everyone know or, you know, listeners know that I'm a diehard Niners fan. So I, I come into Niners game with a little bit of a bias here. Uh, but it was great to see uh, Emmanuel Sanders sort of settle in seamlessly there. Uh, and Tevin Coleman, of course, just a monster game. It's just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Kyle, Kyle Shanahan throwing everything at opposing defenses, and uh, it certainly worked last week. Um, another game in London. Uh, this one is uh, the Texans against the Jags. Uh, opened Texans minus three. It's now minus two. Total 47 here. Of course, the big news in this matchup, J.J. Watt done for the season. And even more names mm. questionable for the Texans here. Jonathan Joseph, Bradley Loby, uh, Bradley Roby listed as questionable. Laramie Tunsil at left tackle questionable as well. Although uh, head coach Bill O'Brien said there is a strong chance that he plays here, Joe. Yeah, I, I think I like the under for this one. Uh, total uh, a little bit high. Sometimes you see some uh, wacky results uh, in these games in London. Same with Thursday night football. You know, everything seems to be lining up towards one side, and yeah. you get a complete 180 of that. But check this out. These teams have gone under in three straight games against each other. Mm -hmm. Average combined score of just 25 points in those games. Uh, you know, they played earlier this season. We saw the uh, the Texans win 13-12. to Last season, we saw the Texans beat them 20 to three in one game, uh, and they beat them 20 to seven in another game last season. So I think the number is a bit high there on the total. So I would definitely lean under. Uh, I think I was reading about D.D. Westbrook as well, potentially a, a, a bang up there. I think he played. Uh, did he play two quarters last week? 
Uh, I don't even think he had a catch or anything. Or it was minimal production at best. But yeah. uh, 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 certainly a name there that you want to keep your eye on. Their second best receiver. And then uh, the Texans offensive line is beaten up a, a little bit as well. Yeah. So, uh, Both tackles, not just Laramie Tunsil. Mm-hmm. Even though, like I said, O'Brien said that uh, uh, Tunsil will probably play. But yeah. uh, over on the right side as well. Yeah. Um, Vikings Chiefs. Now, mm-hmm. let me double check this. This one was off the board. Yeah, still is... Of course, with uh, Patty Mahomes there, uh, uncertain as of yet. So no numbers here, uh, you know, go into this as best we can here. But Vikes have won four straight, three and one against the spread over that stretch. Mm -hmm. KC can't stop the run. And now they have to go up against the NFL's leading rusher and a really good backup in Madison that averages 4.9 yards per carry there. And Adam Thielen expected to return to this one as well. Yeah, another big concern, though, uh, Vikings' best cornerback, uh, Xavier Rhodes, suffered Mm. a concussion there. So he's questionable to play in this one as of right now. Uh, The Vikings, if you guys watch the guys in bet show, I often talk about how great they are at home. They're one of the best spread bets at home over like the last half decade. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've been playing quite well on the road so far. They lead the league in net yards per play on the road. Uh... And I think a couple games now, game and a half or a game and three quarters with uh, Matt Moore in there. So there's a little bit of film out on him, the type of uh, game planning they can do for him. Uh, it's hard to come out here and make an outright pick because we don't know what numbers. And we got to see who's yeah. going to play here, who's yes. going to be healthy. But uh, the under has been a hot bet in Vikings game as well. It, it's hidden 10 of their last 14. Average combined score of 41 points there. And a bit of a weird one here. Uh the Vikings 9 and 1 against the spread in their last 10 games played in the early afternoon mm-hmm. so the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Uh they like to play immediately after lunch I guess. Uh, <laughs> they thrive in that situation. Yeah, so the good uh, teams always do. Yeah, so take that for what you will, but uh yeah, we got to see who's going to play here to uh you know give out any type of leans. Yeah, for sure and if you like mindless uh spread betting stats as well, Vikes 4 and 0 against the spread in their last 4 after an ATS loss but yeah we have nothing really uh to go with here but uh you know on a regular day this is the game of the week uh I hope we get everybody that we deserve to because uh it could be a good little game there how about Kirk Cousins though eh doing the job man biggest punching bag in the NFL and you know and he will be again the next bad game he has or if he throws a a interception late in the fourth quarter he's going to be the punching bag again I don't know what it is. You know, we kind of pick these guys and uh, pit them under a, a microscope. And, you know, he has had some bad performances in big spots. Yeah. But he's on the MVP list right now. He Let's is. get serious. He is, for sure. Uh, Diggs and Thielen came out earlier in the season and said, you know, you know, what's going on with this offense mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, that motivated Kirk Cousins because he's been absolutely lights out since then. Vikings uh, really getting it done in a tough NFC North there, chasing the Packers. Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, Rodgers, um, Cousins. Who else would be in the MVP race? Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins. Can you still make a case for Russell Wilson? I think so. Uh, you know, I think they're a team that's going to get back on track. That was yeah. a sluggish win over Atlanta there. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I think they get back on track. Uh, you know, Tom Brady's going to have plenty more opportunity to pad his stats. And if that team goes 16 and 0, you got to consider that spot. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, Cousins, always the punching bag. People always finding a narrative to uh, let him have it. Mm. But uh, proving them wrong so far. Uh, a game that will feature no MVPs is the Redskins <laughs> at the Bills, uh, a game which opened Bills minus 10. You can still find it at that number or minus 9.5, I believe. This is the lowest total on the board at 36 and a half. Redskins have nine points in the previous two games combined, but are 2 0 against the spread in those games, covering against the Niners without scoring, and covering against the Vikings, <laughs> and Minnesota didn't even punt. Bills took a beat down from the Eagles, and if cleared to play, Keenum will get the call here. But uh, does it really matter at this point with this Washington team, Joe? Oh, man. Uh, I won't be spending a second on this game unless it pops up on red zone. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how much I care to bet on it. Yeah. Uh, if I am making a bet, uh, it is going to be on the under. You talked about how it is the lowest total of the week with good reason. Mm-hmm. The total's gone under in five straight Redskins games. Average combined score of just 274 
And uh, the Bills, they're a good bet in this spot. I, I do tend to think this number is a little bit high, but after consecutive ATS losses, they're 14-4-1 against the spread in their last 19 in that spot. Um, I don't know how much logic's behind that because that's going to go back a couple head coaches, maybe to the Rex Ryan era, yeah, and uh, a couple quarterbacks too. So take that one with a grain of salt. But I would... I go for the under on this one, and it doesn't look like a very interesting game. No, it looks like a snoozer, and uh, I'd love to see that Bills number get deeper into single digits there, away from minus 10. Otherwise, total stay away from me. Ooh, yeah, if you can get them down to 8.5, yeah. that is an excellent six-point teaser option. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Titans at Panthers uh, opened uh, Carolina minus 4.5, it's now down a point to 3.5, total open 40. Up to 41. The Titans have now covered in back-to-back games. And I've been on the right side of both of these after a frustrating start to the season betting Titans game. So Titans are in my good books again. Uh, again. Uh, this is a tough spot here at Carolina, though, Joe. I love the Panthers mm-hmm. in this spot. And I'm going to have them. If it stays at number four, I'm going to have them uh, probably in a few ATS contest uh, con- or picks that yes. I have. Uh, and, I, you know, I do like it. I think a lot of people will look down on the Panthers after getting embarrassed in San Francisco. But uh, that's the way NFL betting works. You know, we tend to see these teams bounce back. After embarrassing losses, we tend to see teams that are half decent anyways will bounce back after situations like that. And Mm. the Titans, we've been talking about it all season. They are the ultimate zigzag team in the NFL. They're not going to go on a roll anytime soon. And one key stat uh, that I think uh, is going to be an issue for the Titans and they're going to have trouble getting their offense going. The Panthers are averaging a league high 4.3 sacks per game. The Titans are allowing the third most sacks per Per game. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I like them to beat up on uh, Ryan Tannehill a bit here and uh, bounce back after that embarrassing loss. Yeah, they'll be pissed off. Uh, for anyone interested in betting the Titans, uh, interesting little parentheses, meaningless stat here. Titans 7-1 and one against the spread in their last eight against the NFC. But... Uh, yeah, I sort of agree with you there. This might be the game uh, where we see a stronger bounce back performance from Carolina after uh, taking it on the chin from Tevin Coleman and the 49ers. Uh, yeah, Jets at Dolphins. Do we have to talk about this? I or? don't want to, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we talked about that Monday night or yesterday on uh, the Guys and Best show, noon in the East, nine in the West. Mm-hmm. Not very interesting, but potentially some good betting spots. Now, No player props out there yet as we sit here on a Tuesday afternoon. There will be ways to make this game fun and entertaining, but uh, on the surface, this does not look like it is going to be a banger. Lev uh, Lev Bell trade rumors floating around, of course. And for a moment, it did look like Miami were going to get their first win of the season uh, last night in Pittsburgh, but of course, Mason Rudolph Got things figured out. Jets, 1-6 and six straight up, 2-5 and five against the spread. Miami, 0-7 oh straight up, but have covered the spread in three straight games. Joe, they say good teams win, but great <laughs> teams cover, so your Dolphins are pretty great right now. I'm scared that the Dolphins are going to win this game. It's the one. It's the spot. I mean, they're playing at home. Listen to this one, though. Uh, the Jets, they are an uh, incredibly undisciplined team. They average the second most penalties per game. The Dolphins average the second fewest penalties per game. So that could be the difference right there of a few drives where the Dolphins get the ball down the field and kick a field goal or the Jets don't. Uh, Jets, just an awful bet, man. Two and seven against the spread in their last nine. They're one and nine straight up in their last 10 on the road. Within the division, one and nine straight up and two and eight ATS in their last 10 divisional games. Uh... All that said, man, I don't know. Adam Gase is like he's trying to try. He's going against his former team. Is this an Adam Gase revenge game? Whatever <laughs> the, the hell that Gase means. Bowl. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I will be rooting. As a Dolphins fan, my rooting interest were, will be for them to lose. But cover the spread. If they lose by one point here. I'll take that. Uh, Jamal Adams' name being floated mm. around as well. And uh, one of the teams interested in his services uh, in the secondary is the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, things might change drastically here before we even uh, leave the studio. 
Uh, Bears at Eagles uh, opened Eagles minus three. It's minus five. Uh, total 45 down to 43 and a half. Miles Sanders left Philly's game in the third quarter with a shoulder injury. And reports are that he shouldn't miss any time, but still keep your eye on his status. Reports circulating that Deshaun Jackson is going to play here. Ooh. Bears have lost three straight, both straight up and ATS. Sort of a disaster. Uh, you know, we talked a lot. Uh, both in the summer and throughout the early weeks of the season about the Cleveland Browns, how they were sort of the sexy Super Bowl pick. Mm -hmm. Bears were in that conversation too. A lot of folks on the Bears, I sort of liked them, of course, to to make a deep run as well. And now here we are. I I, I don't know what this team... Well, this team is a good defense with a shitty quarterback. Yeah, I I like the Bears to cover the spread here, man. It's it's another one of these spots, uh, a, a team coming off a very, very embarrassing loss. An example of this is the Eagles, who were embarrassed in primetime versus the Cowboys a couple weeks ago. Then they come into Buffalo here this past week and win outright as an underdog. I don't know if the Bears will win this one, Mm. but I think the spread is a little high. And I think we're in for a low-scoring game here. Uh, We have a total of 43. Mm. The total has gone under in nine of the Bears' last 12. Average combined score of just 33 points there. Eagles... Awful bet as a home favorite, two eight and one in their last eleven mm-hmm. in this spot. So yeah, I like the Bears to keep it close in a low scoring game and cover the spread. It might be a sixteen thirteen type game, and yeah, I, I like Chicago here. It won't be pretty, but they will be one of the underdogs I have circled this week. Two eight and one ATS in their last eleven as home chalk. Mm. Two ten and one ATS in their last thirteen in the early afternoon. Do uh, more Bears kicking woes concern you? Well, yeah, I mean, th- that guy's got the pressure of the world on his shoulders. Yeah, Unfairly, because some of that comes from, is it Cody Perky, the double doink? Is he, he was the guy last, last year. Last year. Yeah, so then this guy comes in with all that pressure on him already because of this yeah, other man. dork who set him up for it. And the pressure, you know, the fans are booing him off the field. So, you know, it was kind of a nice moment there in the season opener when you saw yes. the, uh, the young guy get out there and he hit his first field goal in Chicago. And the fans gave him a nice standing ovation. Mm. But you knew he was missing that field goal when he lined up at the the end to do it. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Matt Nagy, he's supposed to be this kind of uh, offensive mastermind. That's what they brought him in for. And uh, what's the expression? A, a, a good carpenter doesn't blame his tools or That's something correct. like that. Yeah, they got a few weapons there. He's got to figure out how to utilize them. And uh trubisky by all accounts he's um, a fairly athletic fella yeah um but he makes really bad mistakes he so does make bad you mistakes. gotta i don't know shorten the playbook or something like that but uh yeah there's there's got to be something they can figure out colts at steelers uh opened uh, pittsburgh plus one it's now pick totals 43 and a half keep an eye on james connor's status after suffering an injury on monday i was gonna bet his rushing prop in that game at 70 and a half he finished with a buck 45 uh colts coming off an ugly win against denver but you gotta win those ugly games Mm -hmm. and they have won three straight and five of six joe colts getting it done yeah i think the colts have been maybe a bit of a lucky team and i think a lot of people are going to be on them this week Uh, a lot of people will be down on the steelers after uh you know that first half versus the dolphins left a bad taste in their mouth but the colts surprisingly 26 in net yards per play on Ooh. the season. 26. Yeah, that's Weird. that's a bit of a surprise. So, yeah. you know, you got to give them credit for uh, that was a really nice win they had over the Texans two weeks ago. Yeah. That was a really ugly win uh, against uh, Denver. If, if it wasn't for Denver's uh, lazy play calling, they might have gotten the loss there. But uh, not a whole lot of stuff popping out here in terms of uh, interesting trends uh, or standout uh, stats except for that net yards per play number mm-hmm. uh i am gonna roll with uh the steelers here i think though. well they're seven one and one ats in their last nine as an underdog mm. but you know the colts in november joe 11 three and one ats in their last 15 yeah when the calendar <laughs> flips to november <laughs> that's, that's you know a lot of players only meetings <laughs> take place <laughs> that's the, when they start november getting months. fired up yeah uh lions at raiders uh minus two here on the board total open 51 it's now 50 and a half lions had a four game ats winning streak snapped by the vikings and they followed that up with a straight up win but their second straight ats loss as six and a half point chalk against the g-men quietly the raiders have covered in three of four and are now two point home chalk here joe 
Yeah, I like the Raiders quite a bit uh, this week. I kind of look at these teams and uh, they're, uh, the Lions are the NFC equivalent to what the Raiders are in the AFC. And hmm. what I mean by that is I think that these teams are at the top of the hill in terms of uh, bad teams. Yeah. Like uh, they're going to be able to beat up on other bad teams, but when they face a pretty good opponent, they're going to lose it in the fourth quarter, yeah. as we've seen them each do uh, uh, a couple times in the past weeks. But a couple of standout stats here. The Raiders haven't allowed one sack in their last three games. The Lions ranked 25th in sacks per game over their last three. Okay. So I think we're going to see Kyra have a lot of time back there in yep. the pocket, maybe to pick apart that secondary. Uh, for some reason, they have Darius Slay on the trade block, too. So I know. I saw keep, that. Keep your eye on that one. If yep. he's not playing, I really like the, the Raiders. Yep. Uh, Raiders, really good at moving the ball. They rank third in third down completion percentage. The Lions rank 29th in opponent third down completion percentage. So those two things right there tell me that the uh, Raiders have a pretty good offensive line. Uh, Lions traveling to the West Coast. Uh, awful history. 2-8-1 mm. against the spread. Uh, and the Raiders tend to win when they are a home favorite, nine and two. And with this being a small number, I think that's something to take into account here. So I like Oakland. Yeah, Lions one and three against the spread in their last four at the Raiders. Uh, yeah, don't travel well to the West Coast at all. Uh, speaking of traveling, my God, that's all the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yeah. have done this season. They are now at the Seahawks. In a game that opened Seattle minus five and a half, now minus six and a half. Total open 53 and a half. It's now down a point to 52 and a half. Bucks have lost three straight, both straight up and against the spread, but the over has cashed in five straight. The Bucks have played in LA, New Orleans, London, Tennessee, now play in Seattle. As uh, this week, they've not been home since September 22nd, Joe. It's cruel schedule making. Yeah, that's insane. And maybe that's part of the reason why the wheels are starting to fall off for them here a little bit. You know, we've seen them come out uh, to start things off a little zigzaggy, uh, rotating some wins and losses. Of course, they had that big win over the Rams. But the Seahawks have been a real disappointment playing at home this year. Yeah. You know, you talk about them uh, coming into the year. If you were ranking the teams who had the best home field advantages they'd in the NFL, there. they'd be in the top five. You yeah. know, you... You talk about the, the 12th man that they love to talk about, but they're 0-5 in their last, uh, uh, I get to spread in their last five games at home, but you look at the Bucks, man, 4-18 and 18 straight up in their last 22 road games. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, that's not good, but, uh, you know, a lot of points are expected here. Total at 51 and a half. Uh, the total's gone over in 16 of the Bucks' last 21 road games. Average combined score, 57. Total's gone over in 12 of the Seahawks' last 17 games. Average combined score of almost 52 points there. Um, I think Seattle is going to get one at home here and cover the spread. Yeah, you figure it's only a matter of time here uh, with the Seahawks up there in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, yeah, 0-5 ATS in the last five at home. Sort of bizarre what they've done down the years with uh, Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll there. Um, yeah, Tampa Bay, I just don't get it. How do you get off giving a team this much travel in the first half of the season and now going to the pacific northwest mm -hmm. does not bode well for old winston uh, and the bucks there uh yeah gun to my head right now inside a touchdown there at six and a half seattle all day long uh packers at chargers here open bolts plus four it's now plus three total 46 it's up to 46 and a half packers now seven and one straight up five and two ats entering week nine 3-0 straight up in ATS on the road. Chargers, not good, Joe. And in his preview, our buddy Anthony Riccobono points out that since beating the Colts in week one, the Chargers have beaten Josh Rosen and Mitch Trubisky. This feels too Oof. easy, doesn't it? Yeah, and I do like the Packers here. They're one of these teams. Uh, some people, you know, pointed them to them being a bit of a fraud. If you dig into some of the numbers, they're not like an overwhelming... Uh, uh, at the top of, of the league in a lot of statistical categories, but they are seven and one, and they are finding a way to win these games. Sometimes uh, it's with the help of the referees that we saw in the Lions game. But yeah. either way, you know it was a W. The one thing that does stick out to me: Chargers four and twelve against spread in their last sixteen home games versus teams with winning records. Mm. So we talk about the importance of trying to lock up that number one overall seed, and we talk about home field advantage. 
I think Green Bay, they really have their eyes on that number one seed oh, in yeah. the NFC. If they can, if the playoffs have to go through Green Bay, yep. I like their chances of getting to the Super Bowl. 100%. So, yeah, they're not going to take their foot off the gas pedal here anytime soon. Playing real good football. Aaron Rodgers cranking out MVP performance after MVP performance recently. Um, man, it just feels too easy with this game. These last two we've talked about here, the uh, Seahawks at home, and the pack on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, not so much. Uh, Browns at Broncos. Uh, it opened Denver minus three. It's now plus three. Uh, the reason I'll get to in a second yes. here. Total open 43. It's down to 42. But Joe, Joe, Joe Flacco not playing. Brandon Allen now under center for the Broncos. Who the hell's that? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the Browns are 0-3 straight up and 0-3 ATS in their last three games. But... Something's got to go right for this team, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I, I don't agree with this line movement. Is Brandon Allen, even though I've just heard of him just <laughs> three seconds ago, uh, is he that big of a drop-off from Joe Flacco in that offense where all they do is uh, hand the ball off and Phillip check down? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I think that's that's a pretty big re- reaction to Joe Flacco. Formerly in the SEC, I want to say. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to look that up. But, uh, yeah, the the Browns are the most undisciplined team in the NFL. They average a league-high 10 penalties per game and are tied for 30th in turnover differential. I expect a low scoring the game. The total's mm. gone under in uh, three of the Browns' last four games on the road. Average combined score of 41. Uh, the big one, though, the total's gone under in 15 of the Broncos' last 17 games, average combined score 36.76. And both teams have trouble moving the ball. They're ranked 30th and 29th in third down conversion percentage. I like the under in this one, and I do like the Broncos. It's too big of an overreaction to Joe Flacco. Brandon Allen, formerly of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Uh, yeah, not a ton. A star to is go. born, <laughs> is my prediction. There will be a movie made about him one day, and this move, this game will be one of the opening scenes. We can only hope that uh, Brandon Allen gets it done there on home turf Stars for you born. Denver Bron- uh, Denver Bronco backers there uh, in that particular game. Sunday Nighter pits the uh, New England Patriots at the Baltimore Ravens. It uh, opened Ravens plus four. It's now plus three and a half. The total open 46 and a half. It's now 45. Pats just keep chugging along. Eight and no straight up. And the square bet Pats, 6-2 and two against mm-hmm. the spread in those eight. Covered the spread in four straight. Ravens enter this one off a bye, but just one four and one against the spread in their last six. You know, uh, I, I do pick the Patriots quite a bit on the show, but this week uh, I'm going to pick the Patriots again. Why not? I love the Patriots of in course. this spot. I love it. Uh, it's a good number, a minus three and a half. I would love to see it get down to three, but check this out, man. They're allowing a league low 7.6 points per game, which is insane. They rank first in opponent red zone TD uh, conversion percentage. They rank first in turnover differential. They are tied for first in opponent yards per play. And the big one, the Ravens are 29th in opponent yards per play. So that defense stinks. It yeah. isn't the uh, the Ray Lewis uh, Ravens defense. No. Uh, Patriots 10-2 uh, and two against the spread in their last 12. Uh, they're on a 13-game uh, win streak where uh, average win margin of 20 points. And one kind of unique one here, the Patriots are 9-1 and one straight up in their last 10 games before a bye. So I think you see Belichick and Brady and the coaching staff uh, put a little bit of extra emphasis into these games because they want to go into the break on a winning note. And uh, I think they're going to get up for this opponent. It is Lamar Jackson. He is a different type of quarterback. But I think they can devise a game plan to bottle him up and maybe make him throw. Well, Belichick is the master at that. And uh, obviously that defense looks really good. Ravens, betters poison at home. 0-6 against the spread in their last six in Baltimore. Um, Going to be an interesting game, though. A good mm-hmm. primetime game there. Uh, potentially Monday nighter. Uh, Got who, some big names. Some big names, but who knows with this one. It's uh, over in the NFC East. It is the Cowboys at the Giants. G-Men plus seven. Total open 47. Now 48. Cowboys snapped a three games straight up. And ATS losing streak with a 37-10 to 10 win against the Eagles as three-point chalk, which you mentioned earlier in the podcast here. Covered as seven-point faves at home against the Giants in Week One, winning thirty-five to seventeen. More of the same here, Joe, or what? 
Uh, I like the Cowboys at, at minus seven. I think the number is exactly where it should be. Uh, of course, you know, love to get it inside of seven. And I do like the Cowboys on a six-point teaser quite a bit as well. Uh, Dallas leads the NFL in third down conversion percentage, which might be a, a bit of a surprise. Uh, the Giants defense, we know they stink. They rank 21st in opponent third down conversion percentage. Uh, the Giants, meanwhile, they might have trouble moving the ball. The Dallas uh, defense, second in opponent third down conversion percentage. Uh, Cowboys, 7-0 straight up ATS the last seven versus divisional opponents. Mm. Uh, you know, we talk about punching bags. Jason Garrett's one of the biggest punching bags there is in the NFL. Yeah. But uh, they they come out of these buys quite prepared, 10-4 against the spread after a buy. So, yeah, I do like Dallas uh, to come out and get a convincing win. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and as it stands now, probably one of the games I'm going to add uh, in my uh, picks contest there along with uh, Seattle and uh, who was the other one there? Uh, Green the, Bay. the Green Bay Packers, at, at the very least. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. So there's your uh, NFL board for the week. I had weekend. fun. I had a great time, Joe. I'm not going to lie. But uh, this it will be released hours before Game 6 of the World Series. And mm. for those that didn't get to watch our YouTube show, uh, what do you like in Game 6 tonight? Decent little pitching matchup. Uh, an unpredictable World Series, really. But uh, what's on for you tonight in um, that game? I like the Nationals as an underdog here. Would I be surprised if... Uh, if the Astros close things out, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. They're back on a roll here. You know, it took them a while to get going. Their offense, you know, I've been they've been my punching bag, their offense for the entire playoffs because yeah. how they've been doing with runners and scoring position, but they happen to be getting along. But, uh, you know, we talked about it on the show that uh, momentum hasn't meant much in this series yeah. at all. Uh, the Astros came into the World Series a massive favorite. A lot of people not giving the Nats a chance. They win two games in uh, Houston, pretty convincing wins. And then uh, everyone went to write off the Astros. Then they win three straight games. They did the unthinkable. Yeah. Kind of pathetic by the Nats that they lost all three home games. And now everyone just wants to write the Nats off. Uh, I do think if they do go on to lose this World Series, whether it be in Game 6 or Game 7, that, that is a really bad choke. Mm -hmm. But I think they get it done tonight because... Uh, they have the edge in the starting pitching matchup. Steven Strasburg, he has four starts and one three-inning relief appearance in the wild card game. Nats 5-0 and oh in those games. Yeah. 193 ERA. What's insane? 40 strikeouts to just two walks yeah. in the playoffs. Meanwhile, Justin Verlander, you know, coming into the playoffs, big game reputation, not this year, man. Mm -hmm. You know, he's getting a little bit older. The wear and tear of that long season. I don't think he had one DL stint all year. So he I kind of recall. pitched every five days for months, months, months. Yep. Uh, not good, man. He's uh, 5.45 ERA over his last four starts. That's, as a result, Houston's lost three of those games. So... Would I be surprised to see him rise to the occasion and uh, Astros pick up a win? No, but plus 164. Such a good number. The yeah. uh, Nats, 6-1 and one as a road underdog in the playoffs here. Yeah, Nats value too good on that money line here tonight in Game 6. So uh, if you watch that, I uh, hope you enjoy the game. And if you bet on it, best of luck I'm going to sound there. like an idiot, by the way, if uh, people are listening to this on uh, Wednesday morning and we're watching uh, the Astros porn Parade. champagne. <laughs> Thanks for the tip, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's your lot for the NFL. Week nine already. Unbelievable how quick college football and the NFL fly by when the season hits. But we're already in the second half of the season. So there you go. Some food for thought there before you hit the betting window. Uh, we thank you so much for listening or watching if you are on YouTube. Uh, follow Joe on Twitter. That's at J T F O Z and myself at chalk underscore ninja. We will be back next week with the podcast. And of course, watch the show uh, every Monday through Friday, noon Eastern on YouTube. It's now Joe and I. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll catch you next week. Good luck with your bets.